Hello, Warriors. Welcome to FACE. I'm Dale Pinkert. I'm your host here. I want to welcome all our viewers at investing.com today. So I'll start off with the S&P. So this is a very important area for the Bears to contain this advance. The 61-8 players were shook out last week before this pullback and something about 78-6 because it shakes out a lot of 61-8 players ends up being um, 78-6. And I also remember an associate I used to work with that said the S&Ps loved that FIB number. So uh, very critical if this, if for bears to stop this advance here, otherwise I believe we're gonna be looking at another push to a new high here. So pretty critical right here, uh, 78.6, you know, enough to shake out. Uh, not too many people are short that were selling these rallies since a big break we had into early August. So uh, key level here. And it's not what it does in our day, it's how the candle closes. We get a reversal candle here today after being up sharply. Uh, then there's a problem, and I think you could look for uh, this low to be taken out before we have a better rally in equities. An important part to pay attention to is the trade war. And this is a trade war currency, USD yuan. Uh, we have a new high here without confirmation. In fact, I have a lot of two drives in here in the market right now that I'm monitoring. Uh, I'm looking at the daily chart here. So we have two drives here. This was a confirmed high. Here's our first divergence. Uh, my associate, Steve Volge, I was asking him a week or so ago uh, what type of FIB extension levels USD1 could get to. I believe 723 to 27 was a FIB extension. So there could be one more push. Uh, you know, it seems like the market's been able to shrug off this recent weakness in the wand. Uh, we'll see if we rally to new highs. This might be the catalyst or should be the catalyst for a failure in the S&Ps from there if that happens. So here you go. Here's another two drive formation. Let's get to the star of the show, which has been silver. You know, really, uh, I really underestimated this. Oh, no, Stell, I'm... I'm the face of face, right? You are, you are the face huh? of face. I'm the, I'm the face of face, and you know I want everyone to uh, not only know my voice, but uh, uh, see what trading does to someone, because everyone, I'm only 32 years old. So uh, if you want to uh, get into the trading, <laughs> you want to get into the trading business, it can aid you. So uh, I just, that was really the whole point of it. So, uh, you know, it is a high stress gig and, you know, uh, maybe I've aged a little bit, but there goes the camera. Let's have a good day. So I want to show this in um, silver and it shows up on the one hour. So here we have one, here we have two. And I noticed Blake and Andre talking on Skype about some type of harmonic pattern that could happen in silver. Uh, the RSI reading uh, was a little high here, although diverging. Uh, this implies we could still get a new high. And the gold form is even better because when gold broke through resistance here, uh, we barely got through 70. So if we get a one, this was one, and we get a two, I'll be looking to attempt uh, shorts at a new high. I have this... Uh, three drive line coming in, oh, around 1475 uh, to 80 in the next few days and a weaker dollar might be what the, you know, the doctor ordered for that to complete up there. Uh, USD, the oil uh, had a great day yesterday and here we are right at this major resistance. We start cracking 57, I think 61's in the, in play. And uh, the end, despite all this dollar weakness has been pretty strong, uh, the bears have to keep it underneath this 107-ish level. Otherwise you're gonna have a squeeze develop there. Uh, and one other thing, I wanna congratulate Stell on his macro call in EG, uh, something uh, we've been talking about here for the last few weeks. We got the breakdown yesterday's close. Uh, we talked about 89.50 all the way up here. 
Uh, actually, you could even look for fib retracements. The next one's 8912, and then 88. Uh, you have a moving average coming in here at 200 day at 8830. I don't think this is the final high. Uh, I think this is the beginning of a bull move. And uh, basically, it means that this is a break to buy because uh, after this correction, the euro, whether uh, the dollar is up or down, will hold up better than cable. So cables had this tremendous move. Uh, you know, really, the guys at Forex Analytics were on this turn in, doll in the dollar, uh, mainly from the euro, although the pound was a better one. Uh, Blake was talking about how we could squeeze and talking about much higher levels a little bit down the road. So uh, anyone who's been here with us uh, during the week, and especially our members, uh, know have been able to take advantage of our bot, uh, top pick in the dollar, bottom pick in uh, FX. And Amanda's back. I know a lot of people are re really happy about that. Okay, so we had, looks like they took profits on a lot of them. Okay. Oh, those are closed. Active. Okay. So uh, Blake up 1% in Euro, 1.618 in uh, Kiwi. Our hit rate's a bit above 50%, and um, most of the pattern in plays uh, have at least a 3 to 1 profit risk ratio. So pretty much everything in the green here, Stelios is up 2.5% from where he got in in Euro Pound. I uh, just want to kind of give you guys a head, heads up. If you, like Blake says, you've been on the fence, we're probably a week or so away from our fall season promo. And it's going to be a great time for you to invest in your trading future by becoming part of our trading community. Uh, I've been around for a few years, as you saw by my picture. And uh, I know everyone thinks I'm not being objective. I mean, subjective, but it's the strongest team of traders I've ever uh, been a part of and you know that includes you know I was on the floor and you know they say some of the best traders in the world were on the floor that's not necessarily true a lot of guys made money just filling orders became millionaires by just filling the paper and they didn't have to uh, they didn't have to be directional they didn't have to be right they just traded the flow of paper and got in between the bid and the offer and fought for we call them pips back then we call them ticks so um this is really a strong crew and you have to at least go to our website check it out and what you may want to do before uh the promo is uh take the trial if you haven't for a buck and familiarize yourself and get prepared for uh becoming a, a subscriber and you'll be more familiar with the whole platform and be able to make the most out of uh, the platform. Coach. Okay, go, go, yeah. Since Coach. you're introducing a lot of information, uh, let me also say that um, on Saturday. Yeah. Um, oh, Joe's webinar? Yes, 11, okay. 11 a.m. Eastern Time, um, 1500 hours GMT, if you want it in GMT. Joe has a presentation. Um, you can register for free. Um, I'm going to put the link for uh, Joe's presentation uh, in the chat. Um, you know, if if you've registered Forex Analytics at some point or if you're receiving our newsletter, you should have received an email uh, yesterday about it. I think it's worth watching. It's a presentation uh, Joe has delivered a couple of times before, but every time it's being reworked and, you know, uh, he makes it you know better and more complex comprehensive so uh, it has to do with you know um, the power of technical confluences um, as a guide um, you know to trading the market so I really think it's um, uh, worth uh, uh, watching and so I just put the link in in the chat okay Bloomberg Joe Bloomberg Joe of course yeah okay there's only one Bloomberg Joe uh, Joe course. Kern and his CNBC but Bloomberg Joe is our own indeed Joe indeed Indeed. Okay. All right. So Joe Perry, wasn't he the lead singer in uh For Journey? Metallica? Oh no. No. <laughs> oh no, that was Steve Perry. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway. So uh I Blake, I guess, is up, was having some internet issues. Uh yeah, I'm I'm here now. All right, and, Blake. Great and, call, great call on the bottom of the euro. Nice. Uh 
Thanks. Um, you know, we have ADP coming out here shortly. So I just want everybody to know that ADP is about ready to come out, uh, which we're going to cover, excuse me, live here. Um, you know, uh, 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 the, the Euro, well, you know, the, the, the dollar is just pulling back. I mean, that's, you know, bottom line is the dollar, dollar index is pulling back. We, looks like we're going to hit the 618, which is, um, you know, this 98 level, uh, you know, is, and, and, and so that, that means that the Euro has probably got a little bit further to go. I think the Euro can, can reach 111. Um, you know, I think that's a doable, um, target for the Euro still, uh, but uh, we have to get past ADP. Now, ADP, uh, you know, this is our payrolls report, and we're going to look at the yen really quick. The the, the yen pairs, it, it's just not the dollar yen. I want to sh show you the dollar yen, and what's really important today is this 106.80 level. That's the level that everybody should be watching with with the dollar yen, because if that breaks, you, you, you might notice that other yen pairs have already broken out. Here's the euro yen. We broke out of this down channel, and and if you if you use forex analytics, you 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 saw this analysis yesterday. Uh, pound yen, uh, we got a double bottom. It's got uh, a lot of room to move higher. Uh, the Aussie yen broke higher. We're nearing the fifty percent retracement. Probably some pretty key resistance right through here at uh, seventy three, and then New Zealand yen uh, broke higher out of the channel. Uh, Canadian yen. Broke higher out of the channel. We're at the 50%. This this one can actually go a little bit further uh, than um, because it, it the pullback was a little bit less. But we have to see a strong number, ADP number, which you know right now the market's looking for 149,000 jobs to be created. Uh, previous was 156,000. So we'll see what the number is. Now, if it is a you know if it is a miss. The dollar yen is going to have a little bit of a struggle here at this key resistance, but then you have to you have to look at you know like the euro for example you know we've squeezed past a lot of this resistance already um, you know they they've squeezed we've squeezed past this one one ten twelve level past this previous support at one ten fifty. And, you know, they could really open up the upside. Now, obviously, everybody is probably wondering about the cable. The cable is squeezing. This is, uh, you know, I'll let the uh, I'll let Stelios talk about the cable in a little bit um, and, and what's happening there. But the cable is now in short squeeze mode. And there are a lot of, you know, fast money, uh, short term, you know, institutional traders that are covering, I've seen, you know, multiple reports from different, different sources that, it, you know, just the, the short squeeze is commencing, um, you know, how aggressive it will be, uh, will probably be determined by this level right here. We, we break above one, one, uh, 23, 70 ish and that spike low we're going to start really squeezing because that, that that that's a 50 percent retracement of the the last move lower and you guys already know this because i said it yesterday false breakdown usually leads to a breakout false breakouts usually leads to breakdown this is a false breakdown it leads to a breakout um you know there's a good chance that we're gonna see you know a move back above 125 here in this leg higher. Now, you know, you guys may be bearish the cable. I don't know if this is the right time to be bearish the cable. You know, we, we're probably going to, you know, when a squeeze starts, it, it doesn't really matter, you know, what the data is. It just, you know, you just get a squeeze. Okay. Let's, uh, let's here, let's get over to the dollar yen. Let's look for the data. You see it here, here's Bloomberg, just so you can match it up. ADP looking for 148. Uh, uh, data flash as at 149. You guys know the number is going to be right around 150. That's the expectations. Let's Employment see. data are lagging indicators, anyhow, just to mention. Yeah, you could argue services PMI is equally important today. Y yeah. Um, hold on, guys. Stand by. Strong number, 195. Wow, that's a big number. 
Yep. That is a big number. You know, Blake, I, I've started doubting if there is any real point in watching these oh. numbers anymore besides the fact that the market reacts to them. I'm saying that because I, I know that you probably uh, saw this. Uh, they went back a whole year and they actually reassessed the numbers having to do with NFPs and the change was minus 500,000 which means that for every single month of the last year, um, the average NFP was 43,000 less than reported. So a lot of bids that the market was cheering were actually misses. A lot of misses were miserable misses. So, you know, who knows? When, when they can end up uh, revising the numbers by, you know, that big of a margin, who knows, honestly? All right. Uh... Yeah, they, they definitely will make revisions. So that's like any economic data, though, that gets released. But um, I, I just picked up a little bit of cable on that dip. So when it dipped down to 25, I bought some more here. So just to uh, let you guys know, um, I, I wanted to take advantage of that little dip. I, I, I think that all these yen pairs are going to continue to squeeze higher. Watch this euro yen if we squeeze above 106.80. That's going to be huge. This is going to be a big one. Uh, because this was the breakdown point here. So if we get above that, uh, which, you know, I think the euro is already in squeeze mode. We should see probably 107, you know, 60 or so. Uh, so just just uh, keep that in mind. The dollar weakness that you see against these European current or the dollar strength that you see against the European currencies might be just um, a... Uh, 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 a temporary thing because once the yen pairs squeeze because these you have to imagine these yen pairs like the the uh, euro yen they've been beaten up i mean look look where we've come from right i just think like just from the summer you know we've, we've gone from 123 to you know here we are 118 and you know uh, we're just going to revert back to the mean so you know the uh, move with all these yen pairs up is going to be dollar weakness and yen weakness at the same time and uh and 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 by the way you, you know you look at the S&P we're probably going back to uh whoops that's an Nasdaq we're probably going back to 3000 now we're we're uh, knocking our head up against the top of this resistance zone you can see this has been our resistance zone we're probably coming back up here and so with you know any any type of uh any type of pull back in like the euro for example you have to use that as an opportunity you know the euro pulls back a little bit you probably want to buy it as it's you know making its way back towards 111 uh the cable you know still squeezing we, we the pullbacks are very minor here you know you can see they're, they're just being gobbled up by you know probably traders that are short you know they're just trying to trying to get out of their their shorts i mean look at look at the pound yen this is a double bottom pretty classic you know Double bottom, the extension takes us to 134 and change. You know, um, so you know, use these dips as 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 as, as, as uh, you know opportunities. The the Aussie and I'm probably one of the m trades that I'm really upset about. Last night after the close, I got long um, some New Zealand yen. Just kind of uh, during my analysis, I was doing you know some work and I picked up the 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 uh, New Zealand yen at 67, like 67.48 or something. And I sold it at 67.65 before I went out to, uh, to, to go to my kids' sporting events last night. And I should have just stuck with it, obviously. Uh, one, one, of the, one, one other thing that I want to talk about really quick is, uh, is silver. You know, I, I tweeted something yesterday about silver, the long-term prospects of silver. But then if you read the blog last night, we have a, you know, crab pattern. I had to confirm that with Andre, that this was indeed a crab pattern. Uh, I was thinking it was a butterfly, but uh, because this point B didn't reach a 78%, it was, you know, a crab. And uh, I, I, I sold it right at the close yesterday. I, uh, I shorted it like literally right at the close. So wherever we were at at the close, it was like right here. Um, actually, it was right here at uh, 1950. I closed it on the spike lower uh, last night. I actually had to pull over uh, my vehicle 
and uh, closed it. I didn't get out obviously in European trade, but I did short silver and, um, and I did pretty well with it. So uh, I think silver is in a near term, what I would probably consider consolidation. If, if anybody is looking to buy silver, which I think longer term we're going higher, you probably want to look at around this 1850. Maybe, you know, if we can get to this trend line, you know, how, it depends how aggressively we come down, you know, maybe, maybe it ends up being 1820 or so but i think these levels are going to be uh, uh you know if we can if we can do this if we can get some sort of pullback down here that's going to be the opportunity to be on the long side for those of you that are trying and if you're shorting it if you're out there shorting it just be careful i i, I got my stops to break even like as soon as i could uh as soon as i was you know i think i was in the money by like you know 15 cents. I moved my stops to break even because I didn't want to risk anything. This, this, this trend is way too strong. It is really, really strong. And like I, like I uh, uh, tweeted yesterday, for those of you that follow me via Twitter, I think silver's got a long way to go. And so the last thing you want to do is get, you know, aggressive on, you know, a counter trend trade and, you know, leave your stops too wide. You know, like I said, I just had to move my stops to, you know, to, to break even ASAP. Um, now, we we have this pound that's breaking higher. I don't know if uh, Stelios is here and he's available. Uh, Stelios, hey, so um, what what's what's going on with the cable? I hear Boris Johnson's brother uh, is uh, has has left the building. Yeah, he said he's torn between his ethics and his uh, and the the, um, the party politics. But um, the main thing that happened yesterday was um, that uh, Boris Johnson basically. Um, Sorry, the parliament passed the no deal Brexit um, law, basically that it's going to um, not allow a no deal Brexit to happen. Uh, so that's the, the bill has been passed and that's going to become law, basically. And um, then uh, so that's, you know, that's the, the main reason why we talked about this yesterday, why the pound was rallying. And um, and then Johnson tried to call an election, uh, uh, an early election, and he needs a, a majority to do that. I think it's a two-thirds majority he needs, and he failed on that as well. Um, so where we stand now is that um, theoretically a no-deal Brexit will not happen. Uh, they're still going to try and negotiate. And if they want to hold elections before the 31st of October, if I'm not mistaken, they have to dissolve the government. They have to actually basically vote for a new election uh, by Tuesday next week, one minute past midnight or something like that. So we don't have much time. Um, Jacob Rees-Mogg did say about um, an hour ago or 30 minutes ago that they're going to push to try and get these um, elections called. Um, but uh, if they don't, then uh, there, there are not too many options left uh, for, the, um, for the UK. One so is going now, to be... Senor, yeah? I have a question. Now that they're forbidden to go for a <laughs> no-deal Brexit, what exactly is theoretically the bargaining chip with which they There can... is none. Yeah, there is none. Exactly. We really so, I mean, this. I really don't understand the, the plan here. I don't either. I think uh, 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 taking out the no deal Brexit scenario is not good yeah. for the UK. It's not good for the pound, but uh, short term, the pound seems to like it uh, because the other. They don't either. You guys don't, and they don't. It's, yeah. it's, it's, the, it's the whole, you know, short term fix, long term problems. Just the, you know, it's, it's kicking the can down the road, right? I mean, you know, that's what, that's all you're doing. Yeah. yeah, but in, in the case of, of, of the UK, Blake, and you know that better than anybody, we've been now in the third year of uncertainty due to what's going to happen with Brexit. And, you know, whatever damage Brexit is going to do, if they keep on going like that, it, it will have already been done before we get Brexit. Just, you know, from uncertainty and you know how much that kills investment and, you know, whatever opportunities... Uh, for business in, in the country. So I really don't understand the plan here. They're just, you know, uh, killing the UK economy, you know, uh, you know, a, a millimeter at a time. Death by yeah. a thousand cuts. Yeah. yeah. So they, it looks like the, the most probable uh, scenario now is another extension, but uh, it's not as simple as that. You know, it's not automatic. It has to be voted by the EU and the, uh, uh, it could easily be vetoed or whatever, you know. So this is not um, this is not a, a you know foregone conclusion that things are are okay now that the no deal Brexit scenarios are off the table. 
It's um, the largest FIV extension in history. <laughs> uh, based on what you just mentioned, we have an, um, a viewer here, John, uh, who mentions exactly what you just said, Stelio. He says that um, also to get an extension requires all 28 members to agree and Hungary may veto it as they are sympathetic to Boris. Well, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, they have extended again, uh, you know, before. So you know, you could say that it's, uh, you oh, know, if, if, if it goes for if it goes for another extension, it's probably going to happen. But it's not a done deal. You know, that's a that's a thing. And if we get to a new election, you know, um, Johnson is losing people. But being so firm with his no deal Brexit, and sorry, not no deal Brexit. Being so firm about Brexit, look, we're getting out of the EU. End of story. He's on the same page in a way with the Brexit party. So there, it's. I think it's going to be um, a possibility that they might, you know, the, the Conservatives and the Brexit Party might join forces, and if they do, uh, obviously they'll have a big, you know, big ruling coalition. So, Stelio, even if they don't, people that really, really want to get a Brexit might consider voting for him, thinking that anyhow, you know, it's the two parties that are going to be fighting for government. So. Uh, at least since, you know, our first priority is getting Brexit and he seems to win it, why yeah. don't we vote for him? Yeah, so at, the, at the moment, the, the throw UK... a lot of that vote, yeah. Yeah, the UK parties at the moment are split between Brexit and no Brexit, and uh, Brexit is obviously Conservatives and the Brexit party, and everybody else is um, against it. So it's um, split in the middle, and, um, you know, what can happen? I don't have a clue. You know, I don't think anybody can, can make a forecast on what can happen with that. Well, yeah, but well, I, I'll tell you what is happening is the uh, is the dollar yen is now squeezing. So I, I would assume that risk is starting to move higher as well. So look at the S&P here. Um, you know, we're starting to firm up and, you know, we are starting to see some so a move higher in risk. Now, you know, what what's creating this uh, this uh, this uh, move in risk? I don't know. But anyway, I mean, you know, you know, going going with the UK and going back to what your conversations are here, I, I'm 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 going to let the charts do the work for me versus me trying to figure it out so much, and that's why you know the cable. Hey, as long as we're you know we we hold out and consolidate above 123, I don't think I'd want to be short. You know, as long as we're above 123, we. Uh, are, are holding this breakout point. This relative strength too, to technically, if you look at like the, the four hour cable chart, we're breaking out and overbought with the four hour relative strength, but it is actually confirming, it's not a divergent move. So it is confirming that move higher in the cable. And um, technically that means that, you know, it, it, it still suggests that we're going to go higher, um, you know, whether it is, you know, we, we do that like right at this moment or, you know, we do that, you know, over the course of the next 24 hours, it, it still seems like the, the pound is looking very constructive here for, for bulls. So um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to pass it back over to you guys. I know that uh, I know that we do have interviews and um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, say thanks everybody for listening in especially those of you from from uh from investing.com i know this is a uh, a day where you know a lot of you guys pop in uh, guys and gals pop in so thanks for being here today and remember we cover you know everything fx and 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 obviously indices that surround and and help move our markets uh you know this time of day every day so if you if you if you want to log in you can also log in um, you know, through our website or, you know, follow most of our team on Twitter, uh, you'll get links uh, to this webinar every day and YouTube also everywhere. Yeah. YouTube everywhere, you know, yeah. on Twitter, we, you know, use Periscope and everything else. So, uh, and for those of you that, uh, that like our webinar, make sure you visit Forest Park FX. They are our webinar sponsor. They'll help you find a brokerage firm in the FX uh, market that's best suited for your needs. Plus, if you want to try to get Forex analytics for free, you can join the reimbursement program. If you're not in the United States, if you're outside the United States, you can be part of this program and you can you can ask them any questions right here on Skype or email. Um, so, guys, I'm going to pass it over to you. Thank you, Blake. Thank you. Good luck today, Blake. Thanks, guys. Thank Good luck. Thanks for hunting us, Dale says. Thank oh, you. We have, some, we have some numbers in about 10 seconds. Uh, yes, they don't think Good luck on reporting the numbers, still. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. 
jobless claims, same non farm productivity, productivity 0.1 better, unit labor cost 0.1 better. So, marginally better numbers. There we go, I, yeah. I doubt they're going to move the needle much. No, I doubt it as well. Jobless claims as expected, labor yeah. costs revised slightly higher, productivity revised slightly higher. Continuous jobless claims, you know, as expected, it's it's okay. It doesn't, yeah. you know, yeah, nothing that is definitely going to move the. Yeah. The okay. Uh, we did have a couple of other things I want to mention briefly. We had the okay. We don't. Sorry. Rich bank, I bet is one. Of yes, them. yes. We don't cover the Swedish krona, but it's always nice to look at. It can usually be or often be the uh, canary in the uh, coal mine. Um, I'm already ready for the dollar. Steve, yes. Steve had kronas at his bachelor party. And so. <laughs> so um the uh, Rick's bank met today. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, they met today. The rate is at a minus. Point, minus quarter percent they were not expected to cut actually there was a small chance of a cut but um uh, i think the market got a little bit ahead of itself expecting a, a more dovish tone which didn't come you know they did talk about the current conditions being um uh, there, there are a few challenges but they said that um, their estimate is still that they're gonna hike near the end of this year so go back to zero percent which uh, is not what the market was expecting. And the Krona, as you can see, um, strengthened. So USD sec dropped and same with NOC, which I like, obviously. So um, that, was a, that was a big mover of the day, actually, probably. And um, yes, tell you, I've, I've been showing USD NOC and USD sec during the past couple of days because both of them uh, produced uh, very, uh, very nice reversals. Just look at the USD sec here. Um, you know, intraday uh, traded above this uh, wedge, uh, wedge resistance and then reversed lower. And since then, we've had continuation for two days. Earlier today, I was showing that it was testing support. It seems to be trying to break below it. And that would open the door for a move lower towards this horizontal support area if it takes a few more days. It will also coincide with the wedge support. And needless to say that if we actually break below this wedge, that is going to be a major, major yeah. technical development that is going to lead to much, much lower prices. And yesterday I was showing you the knock testing. This ascending wedges uh, support uh, closed the day there. But as you see, um, today seems to be uh, you know, another day that uh, we're seeing selling. And, you know, even if we just want to retrace uh, this wedge um, uh, or, you know, retest the breakout area at 882, you know, we still have uh, quite a lot of room to move to the downside. So I do think that both of them look very, very, very appealing. Yes, I agree. And I, uh, you know, I am short uh, USD knock. With much lower targets, but that's in a very, uh, it's, it's in a more medium term. Yeah, I, I would be, I would be careful uh, if we if we go back to 880. I would be very, very careful there because, you know, th that was a massive resistance area. Uh, it is extremely likely that at least, at least initially, is going to act as support. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I agree. So, um, yeah, but if for some reason we break that. Uh, yeah. then we're talking about a whole different story. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think that then we can easily uh, continue lower towards 840 once again. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was one thing. The other thing I wanted to briefly mention, we had um, Germany factory orders today came in at very disappointing, minus 2.7% month on month. It was expected to minus 1.5. And this is a, another number which is showing... You know, it's a leading indicator. It's showing that Germany is oh, it's probably going into recession, as is the whole world, apparently. <laughs> but uh, another big miss from Germany. And um, we, we you know, got manufacturing contract, contraction now in, uh, in the U.S. as well since, yeah. what was it? Yesterday we got those numbers or the day before yesterday? My, my yes. days have become so long lately that if <laughs> it's like two days, it's... <laughs> Yeah, I think it was yesterday, actually. Yeah, what uh, was it? 49.2, 49.3, something like that. I'm trying to find it. Actually, it might not have been yesterday. It anyway, might have been the day was, before, yeah. yeah it, it, was, uh, it was below 50, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's which, it. I mean, we had a few more comments. By the way, Stelio, uh, speaking of the US, that was the first time we saw such a low number in manufacturing since, guess which year? 
2009. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So uh, what else? Oh yeah, we also had some. Um, there you go. Forty nine point one. It was, uh, and it was on Tuesday. Um, uh, my buddy Jim Wolf says uh, it's going to bleed into the consumer. You know, we can handle the weak manufacturing part of this equation, but the consumer is seventy percent of the economy here. So that is going to be, you know, Steve. If uh, we really fail, it's going to be because people aren't shopping. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, no. Oh my God! Now you're going to force me to rant again. Um, oh boy! I, I, hold it! Hold it! I, I got in my time machine. I didn't honesty, say it. In, in all honesty, just, just, just. I mean, do me a favor, everybody throw out of the window the economics book the some people are trying to, to teach you i'm not talking about dale of course now i'm, I'm talking about universities and everything a consumption-based model is is bound to fail end of story an economy that isn't producing cannot yeah. survive the only reason economies have been surviving with this consumption-based model is because they keep expanding their debt, debt. Yeah. But there is nobody, nobody in the right mind that can give you a formula that this can work in the long run. Nobody, nobody, because it can't, it simply can't. I mean, we just keep indebting future generations. Um, at some point, of course, the whole trust in, in, in this Ponzi system is going to be you know, going out of the window. And guess who's going to be at a good point then? Only economies that actually produce tangible stuff that have actual usage and are in demand. End of story. So, um, yes, Dave, well, I agree with they, you. They, they say, Steve, that in this new SDR, the way they're going to measure when there, if there is, you know, like a replacement, a new system, and it's an SDR, that they're going to measure the importance of each currency and each country by their GDP to debt and that'll be the waiting uh, which means that the u.s would take a real hit in waiting. i don't want to I, I don't want to sound uh like uh you know gym old. records i don't want to sound old because i'm just 39 but let me ask a question honestly since one because more or less at penny's age everybody agrees that the whole um, fiat currency uh, system that we have, um, uh, you know, um, the US dollar uh, now has more or less failed. Why replace it with a system that will just have a basket of fiat currencies? I mean, let me say it opposite. What was wrong with the gold standard? Really, what was it? Besides the fact that, of course, it handcuffed uh, uh, yeah, being could, able to debase our currency yeah, to make paying back the debt easier. Yes, they couldn't go on a debt binge. That that was the only thing that was wrong with, with the gold standard, right? So, and keep in mind, and I was saying that earlier in the chat room, um, having to do with gold and silver, so we can go back in the chat, because I know that many of you enjoy speaking about economics, but many of you just want to, you know, have a look at the chat. Make charts. money, make money, make money. Yeah, of course, of course. Although, yeah. trust me, to, to make a lot of money, you need to have the big picture in mind uh, at the end of the day. But don't forget that gold and silver are monetary metals, okay? Why? Because they've been accepted as money, real money, since like 5,000 years ago. So, yes... I do see both of them very likely to reverse from here. Blake really top ticked uh, silver yesterday. If you haven't been visiting our blog, if you go to Forex Analytics, and that is free for everybody on a daily basis, either Blake, most of the times Blake or I, we put out, where is it? Here it is. We put out a chart of the day. Okay, yesterday the chart of the day was silver. Blake was showing here in silver that silver hit the 78.6% extension, um, which also completed the harmonics pattern, this crab pattern. Okay, so he actually top ticked it. Um, we know that silver DSI was at 95, which is like, you know, an unbelievable number. I mean, you so rarely see numbers like 95 or 5. So sentiment is extreme. 
We know that positioning has shifted from the market being uh, very, very short silver. It has shifted to you know, the market being long. We know that uh, we've had a parabolic move. How do we know that? Because initially this move was contained within this channel, which by itself was steep enough. So, you know, a very decent uptrend. And then after the uptrend has already moved for quite some time, you get an acceleration higher and you get this, you know, steep overthrow, which, you know, very frequently is uh, like the last leg of, uh, of a move. Now, by last leg of a move, and now I'm coming back to what I, was, I wanted to say is, um, I'm still of the opinion that, let me show you the weekly chart, because for this one, it's better if we talk on the weekly chart. This is just the beginning. Just look at weekly on silver. And, co and consider what kind of monetary policy we're about to get. Okay, so first of all, we are at the beginning of this move. Okay, I mean, I expect that we can easily end up revisiting this chart at some point in the not too distant future and, see that, and seeing that something like that happened. Okay. Um, so yeah, coach, 26 is a very, very, very strong area. So yeah, it can act as a resistance when we get there. But would you be buying it after this move? I mean, silver has moved higher since May by 30%. Just consider this. This is a move that would, that would even make Bitcoiners happy. And we're talking about a metal, okay? So no, Bitcoin uh, quadrupled from earlier lows. That would be like silver going to fall. Uh, yeah, but since May, silver has actually been uh, been out of, outperforming Bitcoin. Oh, well, okay, yeah. Yeah, so- But they're and, not happy with 30%, I'm just telling you, crypto people. It's gotta be oh, yeah. three- They're not happy with 30%. You know I mean? That's why they're gonna find themselves with minus 99% at some point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, but those those people in silver. Steve, I, I wish you had conviction about what you speak. <laughs> but those right. people, anyway, <laughs> I wish you were a little more certain about everything. Yeah, you but said. those people that are happy with the thirty percent they ha they have in silver, why do you think it is extremely hard for silver to go to twenty six? Why do you think that silver would be hard to go to the next zone, which is at thirty five? Why do you even even think that eventually? silver couldn't take out 50. Okay, I mean, every single central bank is just turning on, uh, you know, the monetary uh, stimulus um, machine once again. And we are at the very beginning, officially nobody's in a recession. Imagine what's gonna happen when everybody's gonna be running huge deficits, huge deficits that are gonna be monetized by monetary policy. Okay, we're talking about massive, massive amounts of inflation. And, you know, for those that are going to immediately stop me and say, inflation, what are you talking about? First of all, the expansion of monetary, um, of money supply is inflation by definition. Now, of course, somebody can say that, you know, it didn't spill that much to um, daily prices previously, but uh, you don't know that because, you know, you, you could have had deflation, which we probably would. And you know, deflation is not a bad thing. Deflation is a good thing, especially when an economy isn't isn't uh, going well. Because when an economy is not performing well, at least at least deflation acts as a counterbalance for the average Joe. I'm talking. I'm not talking about Joe Per here. <laughs> for the average Joe to you know to make it better under severe circumstances, people get unemployed, etc. Anyhow, uh, something tells me that Steve, even... Steve just one comment. Um, you know, yes. people always always demonize deflation. Say, oh, this is really bad. We don't want deflation. Actually, the the, the big risk is um, deflationary spiral, which is never going to happen again, because we're we're like you said before, monetary uh, supply is increasing at ridiculous levels. And as long as that's happening, deflation, if it happens, it's going to be very mild, and it's actually not going to be a bad thing, like you said. I don't. So, I personally don't think it deflation the deflation is US, The U.S. had 100 years of deflation uh, at some point, uh, you know, until like 70 years ago, when, whenever it was, and that was the best 100 years of the U.S. economy. Yeah. Anyway, 
Okay. Yeah. So yeah, deflation is not a bad thing. Actually, that's the fun part. Deflation is a natural outcome of an economy that increases its productivity. Um, but you know, a lot of people don't care to to explain that. They they you know they they use as a guide broken instruments like the Phillips curve, you know, based on a broken CPI model and you know all that. Anyhow, gold never really confirmed the new high we had in silver. Actually, I had taken one quarter of a short, um, both in gold and silver. My stop wasn't hit in, in gold, so I'm still in that. Uh, my stop when we went above the previous highs was hit in, in silver. And then considering actually building another quarter short on both the metals, I want to see how, the, you know, how today uh, closes. But yeah, it is absolutely likely that we're finally going to see some pullback here. It is hard to fight the trend, um, unquestionably. But once we get something unfolding, um, you know, it's it, it's going to be worth it because I think, you know, after such a move, we can easily see uh, like a 5% move lower, even more than that, before we get more buying interest. And we will. I mean, I'm, I'm viewing this move that, you know, might be starting here in the metals clearly as corrective. Uh, so don't misunderstand me here. Uh, I, if, if you really want to be on the right side of the trade, wait for a pullback to any of the, uh, you know, uh, proper support areas and then uh, look to buy here. Now, one more instrument that I'm definitely paying attention to and they've started selling, I actually sold it twice already today. Let me see my entries. Um, it's the Bund. And let me show you why. First of all, no, I think it's better to show you on the four hour chart. Here it is. I showed that in the chat room as well. Um, there you go. We have a double top here in the Bund. I have two entry uh, areas. And da -da 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 they are. 177.76 and 177.54. And I'm still just like half a position short here. Um, I jumped a little bit again because I really do think that the boons are, you know, also uh, in need of some type of, you know, a pullback to, you know, to, to work out the extremely overbought conditions. I mean, if you just look at, at the daily chart, we ended up hitting levels like, 87 on the daily RSI. I mean, extreme levels here, okay? So I do think that the boon can easily come down to retest this ascending channel, if not lower than that. So we're talking about a move um, initially towards like 176.50 to 177. And, you know, if we actually break through that, then we can be talking about a move even down to 174 to retest the previous high. So boon is of interest in my opinion, and, you know, one instrument I'm currently trading. I also sold some S&P here. I know that everybody's turning now ballistics on the S&P. I mean, yesterday they announced um, that they're going to be going back to the negotiation stable, having to do with, I'm talking about the U.S.-China uh, trade deal. Personally, I couldn't care less. I've read and heard about reopening negotiations or negotiations uh, doing extremely well or we're very close to a deal and all that, I, I mean, at least 100 times during the past few months. So I could not care less. I know that I like it here, you know, as a technical level. So I already sold half of the position. I wrote that in the chat room earlier today. And I'm going to be fine increasing that position if we move a little bit higher. So personally, I'm still looking for another leg lower in the S&P, I don't know exactly what's that, what's, what can cause that in the short term, but I really couldn't care less. One thing is for sure, I'm not really intimidating by the fact that, as I said, uh, you know, they're claiming that the negotiations are once again ongoing. Uh, let me have a look at a few of your questions. Uh, do you still think risk is constructive given how China's pushed the talk still after their 17th anniversary. Oh, there you go. Exactly my point. No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't believe any of that shit they're giving us. Uh, we've only just begun. Carpenters, what is going on today? Please, I have just joined and I do not know what is going on. Thanks. Pound is strengthening. Yeah, pound is strengthening. Stages already covered, you know, the whys. 
Listen and follow from here, going over, first now, strengthening, uh, you come to the right place. Um, how can I become like you, sir? Uh, what do you mean? You want my wife and my house? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you know, having to do with trading, uh, what is important is to spend a lot of hours in front of charts. You know, it's learning whatever works for you. You know, I've seen people trade with different types of technical analysis and, you know, they become amazing traders. I've seen people trading with fundamentals. Of course, you need to have a long-term horizon. So, uh, you know, they, they do well as well. Uh, the, the, the one element you need is dedication, for sure, uh, patience. And um, I think the right mentality. Uh, I think those are the elements probably all traders, all successful traders uh, serve. The rest will come with time. Uh, mm -hmm. Where do you expect gold pullback? Yeah, we'll see level. Steve, can you elaborate on this thing with UK of labor, etc.? cetera? Uh, sorry, can, can you be more exact in your question? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, okay, you enjoyed that joke, okay. Uh, DAX, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you remember yesterday, I was asking Greg if he thinks that DAX can hit the inverted head and shoulders target. He was uncertain, but I'm pretty sure that the DAX is quite close to doing that. There we go. So we had this inverted head and shoulders formation here. I haven't drawn it on the four hour chart, but we can do it together here on the four hour chart. Um, there we go. So here it is. Shoulder, head, shoulder. And we can measure a target here with PIB extensions. We take the low, something like that. So you can see here the uh, the target of this formation is at 12,370. Anyhow, no matter how you interpreted this, you interpreted it as a range, in which case we got a range breakout. You interpret it as an inverted head and shoulder formation, the targets were higher. Of course, if you wanted to interpret that as a range, then we're much closer to the target because that was just like a, you know, intraday overthrow. So in all actuality, the range's support was roughly here at 11,400 and change. That would make the range trade, meaning an extension equal to the height of the range, target 12,200. We came quite close to that. And it's, it's still, in my opinion, extremely likely that we are going to, make it to that level, why not even to the 78.6%, in which case we will would also um, completely invert it and sold this formation. Now, um, the place that you wanted to be buying, and that's why I mentioned that the day it was happening, was, was when we were breaking above 11,840, because that, were the, you know, that was the level that we got those previous highs. If you have no position in DAX at the moment, I wouldn't be doing anything here. So, uh, you know, if you have no position, you have two options now. Option number one, if you're bearish, um, you know, look for some kind of a reversal and sell because I'm still not convinced that DAX is, is moving uh, higher. I mean, I think it can complete those two targets we talked about, but I'm, I'm really unconvinced that, you know, we, we're going straight higher from here. Um, uh, on the other hand, if you're bullish, I wouldn't be buying here. I mean, if you're bullish, I would say, if you're lucky and you get a pullback to 12,060, even better if you get a pullback to 11,980, those would be levels I would be looking to buy. So, you know, depends on, you know, what kind of a bias you have. Personally, um, as I said before, I believe that buying once we were breaking above the neckline was the thing to do. If you didn't do it, it's fine. We can, you know, catch all the trades. Um, but I wouldn't be doing something right here right now. Let me see the rest of your questions. Coach, do we have an interview today, by the way? Uh, to come in yes. Cycle hits next week, setting up for a high to come in yes. Might be the case. I mean, I, I'm not positive in, the, in, in, you know, in stocks at the moment, especially US stocks. 
um, can they move to all-time highs? Of course they can. I mean, we are in a prolonged uptrend. But personally, after you know the initial move, we got high, uh, lower, which was quite impulsive. I do think that this move is, you know, has to first fail uh, before we can start looking for upside targets once again. Now, um, Blake didn't visit those, so I can talk about them once again. I want to remind you that I kept saying, and you can also look at it as a range, that a key level for the Aussie USD is 68.30. So keep an eye here. We're just like 13 pips below that level. A break above 68.30 in Aussie USD is a bullish event here. So, you know, do what you wish with that information. Uh, But buying above that would make sense. And the same would be the case here having to do with the Kiwi. The equivalent level is 64.25, okay, 0.6425. Keep in mind, though, because both of those can end up getting rejected from the equivalent areas. So you want to trade them to the upside, you know, wait for a legitimate breakout um, because you don't really want to be buying on resistance because resistance can actually end up acting as resistance, okay? Um, Now... I also want to cover the USD against the Canadian because I wrote that in the chat room as well. Yesterday, yesterday was a big, big, big down day and a huge reversal here. So I wrote in the chat room that we were testing support when we were testing support. And now that we've broken through the support area, um, you know, it's quite a bearish development. I mean, this recent price action, which was slow, uh, choppy, overlapping, and kept failing on its way to testing 61.8, uh, was already sending some warning signals. Now that we broke below this trend line support, I don't really see any reason why we, sh- we wouldn't end up retesting this long-term ascending channel support, which currently passes from 131. So I really don't see any big technical obstacles on the way to 131. And I do think that it is a very, very high likelihood that we're going to make it there. Now, what happens from there is quite important because that's that's going to be a huge area that you can, you know, try buying. But if for some reason we do break below this ascending channel, just, you know, put things in context here. Just look at it. You don't want to be long if we break below this channel. That's going to be a huge, huge technical implication. Okay, huge technical implication. So, bottom line, um, you know, you can be as much bullish as you want above 131, but if we make it below that, you know, be very, very careful because the path of least resistance is going to be lower. Uh, of course, in order for that to happen, we would need to see. This recent rejection, I remember it was night and I went in the chat room specifically to mention that the daily reversal that we were getting two days ago in the DXY, there you go, Um, here you can see the key area at which we got this reversal. We're now pushing lower, but, you know, have we done any big technical damage? No, we haven't. I mean, this is a very nice rejection, but DXY officially remains in an uptrend, right? Because we still haven't broken the sequence of higher lows. Now, uh, if for some reason, though, this proves to be the high or, you know, a significant high, how are we going to know that? Simply, if we break below this uh, ascending channel support, then uh, you will have every reason to be very bearish, a lot of dollar pairs having to do with, you know, dollar, right? Um, and, you know, obviously, if, if that's what the DXY intends to do, USDCAD will have already broken the 131 area. and It's going to be on its way a lot lower than that. At the same time, both the USD NOC and USDCAD, which have reversed lower as we showed, will be helped by seeing a technical breakout for crude. And keep in mind that we're not that far away from that, right? Because we're monitoring this uh, flat bottom triangle, or you can call it a descending triangle, right? We have this descending trend line resistance. Also, 
we have a range here, which the highs are roughly at 57. Now, this trend line has also kept you know, moving lower every single day. It's almost at 57 as well, while we have support at 50 and a half. So a break higher from 57 uh, will, um, you know, will, will point to further gains. Uh, next, next upside target is going to be the 61.8 and previous high here at 60 and a half. Above that, we have another confluence of, of resistances at 63. So, you know, those are easily doable levels. While another rejection from here, you know, keeps the pair, keeps crude actually, sorry, uh, in, in this range. So bottom line, if you want to, you know, uh, take uh, a trade based purely on a risk reward, you can be short here because you, you have a very limited risk. Uh, but keep in mind that if we uh, decisively break above 57, I do think that there's going to be a, at least another three and a half dollars of upside, if not more than that. Of course, uh, crude moving higher will help even more USD, the Canadian overperform the USD and the Norwegian uh, overperforming the USD. Okay, coach. Questions? Yes, oh. I'm here. Okay. Do we have I a guest? I see you, Demzella. Demelza, I see you. Okay. So All we right. do have a guest. Yes. Uh, crypto PhD. Okay, perfect. Until you until you upgrade our friend, there is a question about the Australian index. So, you know, go ahead and promote. Uh, our friend here, your guest, and I want to show the Australian because I, I had a, quite a nice outlook here in the Australian index. I was expecting a failure from this long-term channel. You can see how long-term that is, right? Yes. We, did, we did get that failure, but we found support on a support area. I mean, no surprise there. Previous highs, this area had been uh, tested three times as a resistance until you know the market finally managed to break above it. We retested that as support and it's holding for now. But having said that, I'm not sure we're done moving lower. So I would be careful because I think another leg lower like this is a likely scenario before we can start discussing again about bullish um, potentials. Okay. So I would still be very, very skeptical in being long here because I think there's at least one more leg missing to the downside. Thank you, Goats. Thank you, Steve. Okay, Demelza, I'm gonna promote you. Your boss was gonna be with us. Tell him you got a promotion here in face. So you're now a panelist and I'm going to unmute you. And then you can share your screen. Welcome back to FACE, Demelza. Thank you for having me on, Dale. It's great to have you back. Uh, quite a lot has happened. Uh, if you want to share your screen, you'll see a little green box. Green box, I share, you click it, and it'll show uh, whatever screen you choose. Okay. Just hover your mouse around the drop down menu and you'll see it. Okay, we're getting your screen now. Google is up there, a Google page. Okay, well, I, I'll just leave it on here on, okay. on the crypto research report uh, while okay. we're talking. All right, well, uh, let's start with this. Uh, I believe, uh, when were you on last time, Demelza? You remember the month? I think it was April. Okay, so we had already started the recovery in crypto. And uh, we had that, you know, outstanding move, almost a quadruple from three to 12. And we've been moving sideways here. Uh, a lot of people thinking uh, technical entries around 7K would be an opportune moment to uh, step in. Uh, do you pay attention to levels or are you a lot like mm, a lot of gold people who say, don't wait to buy gold, buy gold and wait. Do you say the same thing about crypto? Exactly, Dale. I buy basically the same amount every month, uh, regardless of the, the market. Okay. 
Yeah, that, okay, that's interesting. So, uh, you know, if the market's advancing, you're buying it. If the market's falling, you're buying it. And you allocate, what, a certain percentage of your income every month to it? That's conviction. Exactly. I think right now it's, uh, yeah, I, I put in a certain amount every month and a certain amount of fiat, and it buys variable amounts of, of Bitcoin. And okay. I just hold the Bitcoin over time. And that's basically how I do that on, on my personal account. Because I think, you know, I think when, when, you know, I think even Warren Buffett mentioned it. I mean, when he, when he gets bored, he starts to make his, his worst trades. And, and I think in crypto, you don't need to be that, that clever uh, to make money. You just have to, to be disciplined enough to, to hold on when the market uh, puts you, puts you on in for a ride. Okay. So it uh, looks like a new report, uh, the most incredible duo. The duo is Bitcoin and uh, Swiss. Is it Bitcoin Swiss? Is it a certain coin uh, that a bank's putting out or Switzerland's putting out? Uh, explain the uh, incredible duo to us. Sure. Well, Bitcoin Swiss is the largest broker of cryptocurrency. Okay in europe and we recently made a partnership with them so that's that's what's going on here but we let's see i can try to flip through different pages here what do we got here we got a crypto fund we got our latest article on gold stable coins our, what are our, those what are those gold state i mean gold's been the precious metals uh i i i assume i would make a guess with silver's outperformance of gold that there'll be a silver crypto coming up well, is there anything on the drawing board for that well that's a good point uh to be honest i i haven't i'm sure there is but i haven't heard of it yet um okay but but the there'll silver, be one <laughs> there'll yeah be one. there'll be one pretty soon yeah soon but i i'm i'm not very convinced though, by by the gold back stable coins because there's a lot of uh a lot of risks there that that you're not really getting that much benefit for over an etf Okay. All right. So um, why don't we talk about what happened here in the U.S. with the IRS getting a list of uh, Bitcoin holders, traders, et cetera, that didn't report capital gains. Um, do you think this is a stance that the U.S. government is taking against Bitcoin or just the Treasury needing every penny it can get? Uh, well, um, I mean, that's a good, that's a good question. I mean, basically, you know, they sent out three versions of the letter. Um, the first version was just kind of stating, we, we think that you didn't, uh, accurately declare your cryptocurrency holdings. And, um, the second one was kind of more like, well, you declared something, but, but we think you did it incorrectly. And the third letter was basically saying, um, you know, you you must reply to this letter. We're convinced that you that you have not reported your earnings correctly. So two of the letters you okay. don't even have to respond to if you don't want to. I actually did personally receive one of them, um, and and all of the data, all of the the I mean, all of the IRS received this information from Coinbase, and you know it's really tricky because it the letter basically states that you must comply with all uh, you know tax law, but the tax law on cryptocurrencies is not really um clear in many cases for example i i lost uh, or ha not lost i had stolen many cryptocurrencies they were they were hacked and and there's not a clear process for declaring those types of losses um w within the current system um there's also problems were you new to the game when that happened because you know that would make me pretty paranoid you're an expert uh, you're working on a phd in crypto and you know, I've heard stories from a lot of people of how they've lost coins. So um, is that a constant worry for people? I think so. I I mean, I was doing risky stuff, uh, but I think that people don't even know how to gauge risks in this industry. So I think it, you you find out if it's risky uh, when it's too late in this yeah. industry. So, so how, do you, how, how do you prep for it? And uh, what steps can crypto holders take to lessen the potential of being having their you know what they're believed to be a very important asset to them being stolen i mean it's it's tough enough being right in the market making money in the market uh, taking pressure but 
uh, actually to have your net worth stolen from you, wh what steps do you take and recommend people do to eliminate that? You, maybe you can't 100%, but uh, what steps do you tell people to take to be more, feel more secure when they go to sleep? Oops, I'm sorry, I just got rid of my, can I, let me see here, I have to increase my, uh, somehow my sound is not perfect, but, um, well, generally, that's a great question. I mean, basically, you have, uh, okay, a lot of people were suggesting to put on two-factor authenticator with your cell phone, so now when you log in, you have to type in a password, your normal password, and then it'll prompt you to put in a six-digit code that comes from your cell phone. Okay, so, you mean this like online banking is like I use Zelle. Uh, similar, if I'm going to make a transaction, uh, they will send me a code that only you get on your own device, like that. Exactly. Now, Dale, probably with you, you might be getting an, an a text message with that number. Yeah. Now, here's the problem with that. Okay, that was the first step towards security, but the problem with that is that people are now calling. Uh, AT&T and Verizon and Sprint, and they are telling, uh, these hackers are basically telling these companies that they lost their, their phone and they need a new SIM card issued. So then the hacker gets a new SIM card that has your phone number on it. And now he has access to your SMS messages that, that the exchange will, the bank will send you or the, the cryptocurrency exchange. Um, and, and people have lost millions in the United States. Uh, and in fact, there's a court case going on against one of the largest um, telephone providers because they did give out a SIM card uh, to a hacker and that hacker was able to steal um, an individual's cryptocurrencies from Coinbase a few years ago. And, and now they're, they're suing the telephone company because, um, because the telephone company is not really going to do a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, um, they're not gonna spend a lot of time and money on making sure that you're actually the person you say you are when you call the customer customer service um wow. there's multiple reasons for that um but yeah that's 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 that was the first step the second step was now ensuring uh that you get the the message the six digits through what's called google authenticator which is an application that you can download from the app store onto your phone and instead of getting a text message with the six digits you get um six digits from your um uh, from your 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 phone itself and 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 that that worked for a while but hackers found a way around that and basically now what they do is they reset your password on your so they hack into your email which is the main uh entry point for hackers they hack into your email and then they contact the different exchanges that you have google authenticator set up with and they tell those exchanges that you they lost that you lost your phone and you need to reset the Google Authenticator with a new device. And this takes two to three days, but once it's done, the hacker now has full access to your cryptocurrency account and they have your email account as well. So they can basically hide emails from you um, while this whole process is going on. Um, so now the whole entire industry is trying to- I don't to like the brave new world. <laughs> I know, I know. They're just, every single step we take towards defending ourselves, they take two steps uh, on the offense, you know, to attack us. Um, so it's, it's, it's a tough market, but, um, generally what I do now is I have, I have a diversified strategy. I have a lot of my holdings on all completely offline so that they cannot get into my accounts and hack the majority of my crypto holdings, um, through, through digital means. I mean, they would have to come find, the whole, like the, the, the physical location of where the, the cold storage is, um, they would have to, you know, either, you know, kidnap someone and, 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 and force them, you know, they, 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 it gets very, you know, you yeah. can complicate where's this. Where's the cold storage? In a, a wallet at your home? Or at well, a, where is, I mean, I'm a little commodity trader. So cold storage to me meant where they kept pork bellies. So what's cold storage in crypto? Um, well, that's a great question, Dale. I mean, basically, um, you have, uh, yeah, it, it, what it means is that the coins are not being stored online. They're being basically being stored in a hardware device. Okay. 
um, offline, which could be in a safe. It could be at your bank in your safety deposit box. It could okay. be in a safe at your house. It could be, right. um, it. yeah, it could be various. It's places. like having possession of coins. Exactly. It's the Got same. It. I say, can you still see my screen? I don't know. Yeah, uh, we got you up there. Great. Right now, you're, uh, you have Libra up there. You want to talk about what Facebook's up to here? Sure. Um, uh, Libra is a great topic. I, I was uh, at, a, at a government event last week in Austria, and they had uh, somebody, the, the head of Facebook for Germany, uh, presenting on Libra. And the first 10 minutes, he talked about how we all need to support this because it will help the most disadvantaged in the world, the, the poorest of the poor, the world's unbanked. Um, you know, uh, they, they were quoting something like 2 billion people unbanked. These people need access to financial services and now Libra will, will save the day. Um, are you kind of, fam do you think you're listening? Should I, should I just briefly introduce Libra or do you think they already know what it is? Uh, you could briefly introduce it. So, I mean, Libra is basically launching a cryptocurrency that will be backed by um, five fiat currencies and five treasury bond uh, tre treasury bonds from five different countries. Um, so that would be the United States, the Euro, the pound, the Canadian dollar and the yen, uh, Japanese yen. So what it means is that they're gonna basically buy assets. So, uh, you know, fiat currencies and bonds, they're gonna hold them in an account in Switzerland and based on how much reserve assets they have, they're going to be issuing tokens called Libra. And Libra can be traded through the Facebook Messenger app. It can be used to make payments. It can be used to save money um, over time. Why did uh, they choose the name Libra? Does it mean freedom? Or is it the astrological sign? Well, I think it's because my birthday is in October and I'm Yeah, and you're the only uh, crypto PhD <laughs> in the galaxy. Exactly. No, I, okay. I really don't know. I don't know, Dale. Uh, you know, there's a lot in the name. So uh, I was curious. That, all right. Go ahead. That's a good point. I'm not really sure on that point. Um, I mean, it will be part I, of marketing. It, yeah, it's got to be some kind of, I, I'm not sure. In I mean, Spanish, I, it might mean... Uh, liberty or something anyway um uh, go ahead I, i'm sorry uh, you know my i my mind wanders at my age no i, I, that's a, I really don't know uh, somebody okay. like somebody um but but yeah basically you know whenever i hear people get up and on stage and say i'm doing this to help the poor and and da 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 yeah yeah uh, that's my first red flag you know right. i'm like okay what's going on here um, and, you know, yeah. basically the way that I look at this, Dale, is that it's going to be a massive redistribution of wealth from Africa, Asia, South and South America and the Middle East to Europe and the United States, because basically now there's hardly no, you know, there's no one signing up to, to buy. I mean, there's nobody showing up to buy new government bonds, uh, and, you know, from the developed countries, basically the developed countries have to force uh, banks and institutions to hold uh, bonds. And there's like 16 to 17 trillion in, in negative interest yielding uh, debt. I mean, you know, it's, it, there's a huge, uh, in my opinion, this is, this is really a lot of assets in there. Um, and now, you know, to basically save the day, we can now get the household savings of the entire rest of the world. We can get them to buy Libra. And when they buy Libra, that means the Libra will, the Libra Association will have to buy up more government debt from those five countries and more fiat currencies from those five countries. So for me, you know, with, with, the, with the classical Ponzi scheme, you always need to get new people involved to keep the show running. And I think, yeah, you know what, that, that, you know, we're talking about a 30 year bull market that is uh, pretty extreme. Uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable if that was uh, the asset uh, that, you know, was backing it. I mean, uh, it would have made more sense when yields were higher, but with yields here, doesn't that inherently create risk in the asset? 
I what if rates agree. go up one day is what I'm saying to Melza. No, I agree completely. But I mean, even even a lot of institutions like I don't know if it's pensions in the US have this issue, but pensions in, in Europe have to hold bonds because they say they say that money is too risky to hold. So, well, every bond is uh, money because it's backed. It's in some currency. So, uh, you know, I, I, people are chasing yield. This is really never happened in the history, uh, modern history of economics, uh, negative interest rates like this on such a large scale. So uh, it almost feels like they're coming in, uh, almost makes me think like uh, I have to look for short positions in bonds. If they're gonna bring in the little guy who's unbanked, who might be better off unbanked than buying bonds, after a 30 year bull market. I completely agree. I really so are you going to be buying Libra in your own account? No, no. I mean, what one thing is to keep in mind is that it's. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> one thing, one thing That's that where it's the rubber be... meets the road. You know, if you believe in it, you buy it. So are you warning people about this or just educating them about it? No, I'm, I mean, I'm just educating people about it. I mean, I think that, um, you know, one thing to consider is that it's supposed to be a stable coin in the sense that it's not supposed to have um, appreciation. So it's not really an investment, so to speak. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm warning people about it because I really think that this is just an extension of the current monetary system in a new form. It's the emperor's new clothes, um, but I still think the emperor's naked. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, that's uh, uh, Facebook's experiment. It'll probably be hugely successful because you know they could promote how well the bond market, let me stress, has done, not what it may do, but how it is done. So uh, what else is on your mind and radar, Demelza? Oh, let's see. Um, I mean, the cryptocurrency market, I mean, I do think, uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of topics. I think that Facebook, you know, because Libra will be somewhat successful or very successful, we have to see, but um, I do think that, you know, Libra and Facebook could basically become too big to fail in some way because um, there's already discussions about, you know, if, if the world's economy uh get, becomes dependent on facebook um and, and libra then then this could become something that's very relevant relevant for for political uh discussions and at that point they could really come after bitcoin because i think that a lot of people would you know libra is kind of like the nice user interface everybody's familiar with facebook facebook will make it very easy to buy libra i mean it'll facebook will make it so easy to buy libra we'll probably be buying libra in our sleep um okay. and i think that this could eventually have a, a consequence on bitcoin because a lot of people are kind of think this is kind of bullish for bitcoin like you know it'll bring people one step closer to crypto but i actually think that if if facebook can convince these five governments that they can redistribute, you know, they can increase demand for bonds um, and fiat, then I think that, you know, a lot of uh, anti, uh, you know, uh, anti Bitcoin rhetoric, rhetoric will, will come out. And then at that point, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure because it's, it's the Bitcoin yeah. is, is fighting a tough war here along with gold and silver. Yeah gold and silver uh, winning the war and so is bitcoin lately so um uh why don't we talk about uh what you offer to the public besides your great research uh, maybe go over your website and uh so people have this type of resource uh before they you know commit their hard-earned money to something that's new to them so how do you go about educating people do you have webinars too Demelza, do you, uh, you know, uh, have a community? How do you go about it? Well, actually, I mean, that's a great question. I am um, basically a writer. So I do a okay. lot of writing. I do writing all over the, uh, you know, for Forbes and uh, Business Insider and, and all, you know, all these types of outlets. Um, 
but the company that I work for, actually, I'm going to become a partner uh, this next quarter. Uh, there's right now there's four founders, um, uh, and and I will join as the fifth partner. Uh, these are basically our our team. This is Stefan, Ronnie, uh, Mark. Doctor. I, I just had Ronnie on a few months ago. Oh, how was he? How was he? Oh, great. We had fun. Ronnie's great on, on the markets. And Mark Balak is my direct boss. And uh, and and Hans, then we have uh, some compliance team. Um, but but generally what we are is we're a wealth management firm. Uh, we have, uh, you know, basically one gold fund, uh, one uh, commodities fund, like broad commodities. We have uh, the crypto fund where I work. And now we're, we're trying to grow the crypto space, uh, the crypto side. And um, we're probably going to launch launch a, a volatility trading strategy um, based on Ledger X in the US because now the US has Bitcoin settled futures. It used to be yeah. only cash, uh, cash settled futures. Um, so this is this is a quite an opportunity because the volatility is really, um, I mean, the, the, the premiums on these options are, are enormous. Okay. So uh, you, you guys are, uh... Basically, you're going to have a trading operation, funds, et cetera. And uh, you're the only American, huh? I'm the only American right now. Oh, yeah. The, oh, okay. Well, at least, you know, they still let you in despite what's happening here. And uh, really, <laughs> uh, yeah, and Ronnie was great. So um, you guys look like you're covering the whole gamut. And uh, what kind of minimum investment to get involved with you guys does it take and are there uh can you take money from non-credited investors for your funds well that's a great question i mean we have different funds some where only professional or qualified accredited can invest other funds where uh retail can invest so we have various products um we don't, as of this moment, have a product that Americans can invest in, which is a real pity. Um, but we hope to to bridge that gap uh, in uh, you know in quarter one or quarter two of next year. Right now, we're we're working on some other uh, initiatives. But um, the minimum investment for the cryptocurrency fund is a thousand dollars. But yeah, That's but, a low but entry. some of the yeah, it's not a high entry. It's not a high yeah. entry, and it's 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 yeah, it's it's quite uh, quite progressive. Uh, the regulators. Do you have an equity? You have an equity curve for that fund over the last few years. An equity per, curve. Yeah, you know, kind of like performance of what the fund has done in the last few years with all this volatility. Uh, is it just uh, a uh, long only fund, and it stays long forever? No, um, it's basically gold and Bitcoin uh, combined in one fund where if Bitcoin goes up in value and it, it takes up up to if it, you know, the weight of it within the portfolio reaches 40%, we sell the Bitcoin, realize gains, and then we buy gold, physical gold that's stored in Liechtenstein. And the strategy year to date this year is 47% up. Nice. Mm -hmm. How about last year? Yeah, so it it's 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 not a bad year, uh, it's but a great year. Um, of course, if we had, yeah, it's a great year. Um, and the whole point of that is to reduce the risk because a lot of institutions just don't want to hold on to pure Bitcoin strategies where they can lose eighty percent on on their one percent position in well, crypto. Well, did so. you have drawdowns last year, before uh, the bottom at the beginning of this year? So did the fund we suffer when Bitcoin went from nineteen thousand to three? Uh, actually, we weren't launched last year, but if we had, if we had been oh, launched, okay. we would Good have timing. Had, yeah. yeah, we would have had a bad year last year. I mean, but yeah, everyone did, but we would, right. we would have had, I would guess around a 50% drawdown last year. Okay. All right. So what's the mix right now with the performance in both and gold really uh, stealing the show, although silver's outperforming, does gold become a bigger part of your fund with the move? that we've had in it as far as uh, asset value? Has it climbed to 40% uh, yet? Well, no, well, the thing is, is basically when we started out this uh, strategy last year, it was just a pure hold long strategy on all cryptos. And that's why we would have had the 50% drawdown because it was just directional. Mm. And 
And what we did, what we did was we switched it so that now we have 75% gold and 25% Bitcoin. And as Bitcoin goes up, we we sell Bitcoin and we buy gold and vice versa. If gold goes up, we would sell gold and buy Bitcoin. But right now we, gold has not hit the trigger where, where we're selling gold and buying Bitcoin. We haven't, we haven't got there yet. Got to be, I, I, you know, I mean, we've had a 30% rally, so have to be approaching it. Yeah, that's a good point. So what that's do you good... need, 2,000 gold to approach it? That's a good point. Okay. I would have to, this, see, this is a great question for Mark. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you the, know, like, down the road, uh, you know, I can interview a team. I can make, you know, you and Mark and Ronnie, we could do a panel one day. So uh, anything, uh, the most important thing you want to pass on to people listening to us live in the recording later? Uh, Demelza in the last few minutes um well i think the best thing is that uh to to get our report so you know if they go to crypto research dot report slash downloads they can get it it's available in english or in german and also i just wanted to say we are totally revamping the entire website we're going to have um proprietary data available for free with about a hundred different variables uh, in CSV file and in Excel file, so people can download the data, um, get it on their side, and start doing the kind of analysis they want to do. We're going to have um, basically uh, all sorts of different features in there: monthly, weekly, quarterly, daily, whatever, inner daily, you know, inner inner day uh, uh, tick symbols. Where it'll be, it'll be really nice data. It'll be on multiple coins. It'll be com you you can compare. The cryptocurrency market to the s p or to the dax or s uh, s p you know we're, we're going to have all the main stock exchange indices up there and uh and gold of course and silver so um so in the next couple months uh the website's going to become uh, basically a data platform and we hope to drive uh, more readers into our report more readers uh, more uh investors into our website and um and, and yeah that website address again is crypto research dot report that's for the report but that's the website address too exactly the 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 actually downloading the report is crypto research dot report slash downloads okay all right well demelza uh i recommend if you have an interest in this asset class this arena that demelza's uh really on top of it and uh, she's part of a great team and uh, Demelza, I believe in teamwork. You know, there's no I in team. Uh, that's what we have here. And, you know, I wish you and your team a lot of success, especially with your mission on educating people about landmines, pitfalls, and how to be secure in doing this. There's enough uh, to deal with price risk. Uh, people shouldn't have to deal with uh, fraud, right? I or, or deal or thievery. So uh, anyway, it's tough, tough enough to make a buck. And uh, thank you for your mission. And I root for you. And that uh, we'll be back together next time. Maybe we could uh, set up that panel. And uh, uh, I'm sure we'll have more to talk about this winter. So we'll schedule something for that, that time frame. Thank you, Dale. And I keep following you on Twitter and I love your tweets and I just oh. think you're doing great, great things for the U.S. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, we're international. So oh, okay. I'm, an, I'm an international star. So uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you want an eight by 10 glossy autograph, let me know. I'll get one out to you, Demelza. <laughs> and really, it was a pleasure, pleasure uh, chatting Hi. with you today. And uh, congratulations on really uh the uh, being brave in the new brave world and the new frontier of crypto thank you dale all right so that's a wrap for us everyone and also um nfp tomorrow so trade the nfp should be no freaking problem and remember don't just count your pips count your blessings and we'll see you tomorrow for the NFP. Adios.